Doing the same thing, trying to get a left and a right point. I'm just gonna mark it there. Mark it right there. Back up, look at it one time. Looks really good. What I'm looking at now is that this plastic separation happens at the same place, top and bottom. I'm gonna take the squeegee, roll that in. Do the same thing here. Those look pretty yeah, good. Yeah, that actually looks pretty close. That point and that point is going to be good. So if you notice, guys, I'm not using a ton of pressure. I'm working pretty slow and methodical, making sure I get nice and deep underneath this black plastic here so we don't end up with a little white edge. So let's go ahead and uh, see that. Nice gap right here to run my blade. It's positive, I can't see any gap there. Great, little coverage. Now, the transfer paper that we put on these decals is meant for air release vinyl, like a wrapping vinyl. Um, it's not the same transfer paper that you get just on decals, unless they are an air release decal product. But while it won't stretch as much as vinyl, it definitely is um, useful here still. So don't pull it off yet and try to wrap all these honeycomb around individually. transfer paper nice and slow that way if any honeycomb pulls up like that one you can quickly address it get it stuck back down if you have to see that honeycomb is giving me a little problem so I'm gonna just start tearing the transfer paper and I'm gonna come at it from a different direction so let's get prepared I'm gonna need a couple pieces of tape Gonna help me line everything up nice and straight. And we're gonna go off the same theory that we did down here that there's a center row on this grill. There is, if you look, if you lean way back, you can see white paint through the bottom center or just measure off and find the center line and that's where we're gonna start. We have the same thing here. This is our center row of honeycomb, I can tell because I can see straight through the air vent down into that and it lines up perfectly. So I know that's the case. I'm gonna go ahead and even though I know it's the case, I'm gonna put a mark here. It's just gonna help me in my mind remember that my center line is about right there. Now I'm gonna look and see about how much stripe I need. This isn't gonna be a lot, but I do wanna have extra stripes so that I can come around here and I can get nice and deep into here. I'm gonna use knifeless tape to cut this bottom. You could use your knife and cut right along the bottom edge, either one, but because we have this tool, we're gonna to use it. So I'm gonna go about a quarter inch away from that front lip so it's not visible on the front of the car. And nobody's gonna be down here on their back looking up. Looking here, I'm gonna do the same technique I did on the other one and actually cut out some of the center honeycomb here. I'll show you guys why in just a second. There you go, cut that out. And that kind of helps me center all of this and gives me extra to cover over here. Because if I would have just centered here, you see I'd be short. So the honeycomb really allows you a lot of freedom when installing this. There we go, all right. Time to start the install. Be very careful when I pull this backing paper off that none of the honeycomb want to go with the backing paper. Notice how I'm keeping it straight and I'm making the backing paper twist down. It's kind of helping me remove it. This is an air release vinyl product. 
So as long as you don't apply a ton of pressure, it's gonna be pretty forgiving and we'll be able to make some adjustments if need be. So now I'm just looking at the black plastic, the white plastic, and the honeycomb corners right here and right here. Those look straight. I'm straight here. I'm gonna try to take, does that look good? Looks great from back here. Looks great. So I'm gonna take right here and I'm gonna run my finger right along that edge. Same thing. That's gonna be where I'm gonna start this install. Everything works down from here. Pull up real slowly as some of these honeycomb wanna come up, some don't. And so now we release the thread, pull it right across and release the bottom section. And now I don't want to remove the transfer paper yet because I got to deal with these top ones. What I'm going to do is fold that back over that black textured plastic while I'm holding it back to me. Just use my squeegee and wedge it in there. Uh, do we have a micro squeegee? Yes. This is a pretty thick squeegee on the edge. So what I've asked today is to get us a thinner squeegee so we can tuck even further back into this and uh, make sure that we don't have any white paint visible on this leading edge. So you can see these micro squeegees, which we sell on the website, they come in packs of three. It's a much, much thinner profile. So there we go. I'm able to tuck this much deeper. That's done. Now we look for a place where we can start to roll the transfer paper back and free it. So if you see, I'm actually just applying the honeycomb with my fingertip right here at that bottom edge. I can see it kind of lifted and I don't want the transfer paper to take them with it. And now very slow on the start. All right, perfect. It's coming up. This, there's no really perfect way to do this. Make sure you watch for any decals that want to come up with the paper. So we already have a stripe on the bumper, so I can align off of that. But if you don't, there is a center honeycomb in this grill and I am lined up with that. So I'm still within my marks on the back towards the windshield. Now, one thing, when I put my tape down, I'm not putting it exactly next to the transfer paper. I'm putting it about a 16th or an eighth of an inch over, but it's an even gap on both sides. Oh, being very methodical on uh, how we're squeegeeing here. Now you're pretty much at the scoop. Mm -hmm. This is where we're gonna start thinking about how we wanna take this on. This is where we also start dealing with the most complex curves that we're gonna have to deal with in this installation. So, go ahead and remove the rest of the backing paper. I'm gonna hold this. What I'm going to attempt to do is follow this, this ridge right here on the hood scoop. There we go. We've got the back part of the ridge down about eight inches. Come over here and do the same thing. That ridge is now down also. And the last bit, we may have to fix a couple of these honeycomb here as we're noticing. But again, with this kit, it's all possible. So. What I'm doing here is we're sacrificing one to make sure all the rest go down great. We'll come back in and fill in this gap. So after starting the installation that way, Jose did bring up something and I think this would work as well. If you have enough stripes, which you will if you buy a standard or a large vehicle stripe kit, you can actually attempt to do this hood where the keyed portion of the vinyl might come to right here. And then you take another stripe section and key it right there. That would help you eliminate all of the stretch that we just had to deal with. Seems like a good theory. I don't see why it wouldn't work. Um, it would just use more material because now you're taking this stripe and you're dropping it by half uh, and you would be taking this stripe and cutting half of it off of it. The great thing is, you can actually key those two areas though and make it just as long.
All right, we're gonna continue the honeycomb stripe install with the next section, which is right here. And you can see uh, the sunroof moving right now. Jose is in the car. He's backing the sunroof up just a couple of inches. That's perfect. Okay. So we now have a two or three inch gap here, but for us to be able to tuck down into. And most importantly, we didn't take the sunroof far enough back so that the bug shield raises up. All right, it's not bad. We're just taking extra time to make sure each honeycomb is nice and folded up in here. Because the sunroof is gonna close and open against this section, I'm gonna make sure all the vinyl is tucked under. It's gonna look awesome. It's gonna look OEM right there. No one will even be able to tell. I think what I'm gonna do on this front edge is approach it just like I would if I were wrapping the roof of the car. Jose and I were just talking about it. All we're gonna do is like remove a couple of these honeycomb here to get around there. We have a couple of options. Um, the easiest option would be remove all of these, just like this, and take this entire section out. If you do that, you're not gonna have anything in the way of that antenna, and you're gonna be able to lay this down super easy, super tension free, <clears throat> and then replace any honeycomb that you need. I think we can actually do the exact same thing, except leave these four honeycomb in place, because they're barely gonna touch the side of the antenna, and then all I may have to do is put one in the front and one in the rear, and it may look perfect without anything, and it may just roll. Um, I don't think either one of us are wrong in this situation, um, but because mine actually could get us in a little bit more trouble, I'm going to try mine. So you guys can see if it's a good solution or not, and if you feel comfortable doing it. If you don't, go with Jose's, remove the entire section, and nothing's going to go wrong. Those in case we need them anywhere else. So really, we can do a lot with this. We can push this honeycomb back, we can go forward. Really, there's a lot of options here, and there's a lot to center on, which is really nice. We've got a nice cutout from the glass here where the third brake light is. We can use that. Uh, we can definitely measure off these. Those are very simple. And of course, we have the antenna. Okay. Now we have a center mark right there on the glass as well. We actually don't have too much vinyl to deal with going under this this rubber here. We only have one, two, three, four hexagons, then we're gonna put a fifth back in place. First thing, I'm gonna go to the other side of the vehicle and take care of those two pieces there. Hold it straight over the squeegee back towards me and down so I can tuck it nice and deep and lay my knife sideways so that it's, it's inside, I can feel it inside of like a 3M double-sided tape. You don't wanna feel it against something hard like metal if you feel it in something squishy tape, you're good. Again, push the vinyl under the antenna, cut right to where the antenna turns and changes direction. I'm gonna put the squeegee there and then I'm gonna turn it. After I free the vinyl off the car, last time it worked easier. So, free this vinyl up, now turn the squeegee and watch how that vinyl, see how it just Applied flat to the roof of the car. And now we have no visible light. So, we brought the other, other honeycomb back because now I can stick them back in place. I'm just gonna find the two that I wanna put. It's gonna be these two here. Cut off this last one because it's only gonna stick to the glass. As predicted, the ones right underneath the spoiler are wanting to come back, but you can see we're just going to surgically replace one. It's like the game of operation. You can see the natural tension of the vinyl having it flipped up like this. So I've now worked it right to that ridge. You see now it's naturally kind of grabbed that ridge and started going back towards the car. So that's perfect. That just could not be any better. From here, we're just trimming. So I have, I'm not going to trim right on that gap yet, if you notice. I'm going to cut a little bit away from because I want to get that vinyl tucked nice and tight in there. And by taking that little more excess away, I've got, a little, I've got rid of a little more tension, see? And naturally, it's just holding itself in place now. So I can ride my knife along the top of this textured plastic. We're done with the main part of the stripe. Now all we have to do is come back with the pinstripes, and this sucker's done. Thank you.